Hi everyone, I've missed you. <laughs> I feel like I've been AWOL for so long. I literally missed one video, didn't I? And I've no excuse other than the fact that I'm a woman <laughs> and we have these inconveniences every month, but I've got so much to catch you up on. Like, I don't even know where to start. However, this is not the video for a good old catch up because you know what I'm like, I go to London to get to Preston. So anyway, I've had a really good rest and I'm feeling back sparkly all over again. So that's good news, isn't it? I promise the next video will be a vlog. We'll have a good old catch up. But for today's video, as promised, I thought we would do the 2024 interior design trends video and this is not just any old designer trends video because we're a bit late to the party like they usually get posted around January time and just like you I am so interested in the world of interior design obviously doing these house renovations so yeah, I'm sure you all know what the trends are this year in the magazines and things like that. But what I wanted to do for this video is, because obviously I'm not a designer, an interior designer, <laughs> but we all love this kind of world, don't we? But yeah, what I wanted to do was pluck a few out and discuss them, see what we think, if we think we're going to get on board with them, if we're definitely, definitely not and why. I just think it's a really good discussion, isn't it? But yeah, for the sake of this video, I have specifically used these two publications for a reference point for this video. So I've taken the design trends that have been featured in Vogue and House Beautiful and both those articles I will link in the description box down below if you want to have a read of the actual thing. So go and get yourselves comfy, get yourselves your preferred refreshment of choice and I'll meet you back here and we'll get straight into this video. I'm actually on lemon water today, you guys, because I've been drinking far too much coffee in Italy and I just can't wake up, even though I've been drinking all that said coffee. And then I've been drinking too much cups of tea at home and with it being spring, I just need a refreshing change. So not only am I trying to get the water in, I've got lemon slices in here as well, because, you know, vitamin C. Also, you guys, how much do I look like Griselda off of Netflix? Am I giving mob wives with these glasses? Okay, so the first trend I wanted to talk about in this video is quiet luxury. And I don't think this would come as a surprise to many of you guys who are interested in, in interior design anyway, because it's been floating around, I think, for the last few years, not only in fashion, but in furniture. Furniture? But in... um the interior world as well and I find that quite a lot do you because I love I love fashion as well the trends that are happening in either fashion or the interior world they always bleed into the other like they always seem to like coexist almost do you know what I mean it's no surprise to me anyway that this trend was going to bleed into the interior design world because I think it's a lifestyle, isn't it? Quite luxury. This is why it's something I can really get on board with. Like if you want to stop chasing trends when it comes to fashion and the interior world and you want to save some money, you will start adopting this um, investment mindset. For example, buying investment pieces, furniture, old, antique, things that will last forever or you hope they will last forever and you're going to look after them forever and you're going to build your room around these pieces. So this could be done in so many creative ways and I'm sure there's lots of examples on Pinterest. I will leave some in for because I am a visual person. So if any of you are like me, I need to see what, what you mean. You know what I mean? So I will leave some in for pictures on screen so you can see the way I would incorporate this trend is like buying a Chesterfield sofa you know like an old vintage well looked after investment piece yes they are expensive but that's this statement piece in the room and then you build the room around it that's one example that springs to my creative mind another is my own house so if you're following along on the renovation blog the kitchen loungy area i am looking for still looking we're gonna go thrifting actually really soon but i'm still looking for a vintage style dresser and it's gonna be my coffee station and it's gonna be right next to our round breakfast table and that area is a lounge kitchen area 
I'm hoping it's going to all come together in the end and you'll see what I mean. But I'll pop some inspiration pictures here. But as you can see, I'm willing to spend some money on an antique old, old money vintage piece of furniture and that room is going to really come together when that piece goes in <laughs> and then we're going to accessorize around it with all the little faffy good bits you know the next trend is tone on tone and i'm really excited to see this trend to be honest with you with other people i won't be incorporating it into my lifestyle because i like a sad beige neutral aesthetic so we've seen this sad beige life they're calling it that on tiktok i'm not calling it that i've clearly got a sad beige existence <laughs> i just prefer it that way let's not get into it but it does look expensive now who's to say you can't do the same thing with the color of your choice and i think that's what they mean by tone on tone so from what i understand about it is it doesn't have to be sad beige for it to look expensive it could be any color your preferred color of choice so we all know if you layer a color and different tones of that same color on top of each other just like the sad beige aesthetic then it just looks really well thought out well curated and really expensive we all know that but who is to say this color is the only color that's going to look expensive if you do that so say your favorite color is pink marrying a load of pink tones together will create the same effect or if your color is green or blue or whatever color and there's some fabulous colors to make an example of this trend out there in the world i'll pop some on the screen for you now it can be as eccentric as you want it to be to match your personality and i just think it's really exciting to see isn't it just some color injected not every trend is going to be for you so you have to work out whether it is or it isn't and then go with that you know always do what you feel is right for you don't follow somebody else when everybody jumps onto the trend and every single person has the same thing it does get a little bit oh, i'm sick of seeing it you know like because that's how it's meant to be isn't it every single person is meant to be a unique individual and it's just beautiful to see and the next trend i wanted to chat about is vintage statement lighting so this one I can really get on board with, not only because I live in a period home and I just think it looks really dramatic with the high ceilings, it also looks dramatic in anybody's house. But we're seeing like over the top chandeliers, I tell you what chandeliers I'm really thinking about, these kind of chandeliers, over the top French lots of um you know statement pieces and they become the focal of the room like i just love to see there's nothing more magical to me than a massive statement oversized chandelier in the middle of a room and also where it draws the eye up and it's just like a a little gaspy moments i just love all that stuff i've always had chandeliers in my houses white house dramatic chandeliers and i don't know maybe i will change the chandeliers in this house i say maybe because we don't know how long we're going to be here um so i'm quite happy with the chandeliers we've got in the house in fact i've got some really cool ideas for spring decor when it comes to the chandeliers i'm sure you can all guess what they are but we will be decorating for spring so we'll go through all that when we do that video I actually chose some vintage lighting above my kitchen island and I'm really in love with it. I'm really in love with that lighting that like, and it was from Dunelm. I'll link it down below, I'll pop a picture on the screen and I'll link it down below as well. That would also look really good hanging over low over obviously i've got mine over my kitchen island but it'll also look good over an oblong oblong rectangle style table as well. And what I'm also seeing a lot of is obscure vintage lighting hanging in little nooks and corners of a house, like where you wouldn't normally find them. Like I said, I'll pop some visuals on the screen, but like say like in the corner of the room, there's just a big chandelier like hanging down because that's where the chair is and you're reading a book and it's just hanging over. Um, and I've seen them in dining areas as well, little dining nooks and I think they're really really nice i also love vintage chandeliers hanging outside 
Have you seen them? Now, usually they decorate weddings and parties with these kind of chandeliers, but who's to say you can't have one in your own bloody garden? <laughs> so they're saying stripes. Now, we know there's wallpaper stripes and things like that, and I can actually get on board with the wallpaper stripe. It depends where it's going though for me, personally. I'd only like it in like a utility room, like a linen style wallpaper stripe. Other than that, stripes for me are pajama stripes. So for the bedroom, I do like a stripe here. I've actually not got it on the bed at the moment, but I do have a stripe hotel collection um, bedding set, which I think looks really, really nice. But yeah, we're not talking about those kind of stripes. We're talking, and I'll leave some visuals on the screen, in bathrooms, and they're done with the tiles. So yeah, stripy tiled bathrooms in particular. And yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I think that's a real trend where it's gonna leave as soon as it came in and then you're gonna be left with a big job trying to fix up a bathroom again. And it's not, you know, it's not an easy thing to keep swapping out, is it? The tiling and things like that. So yeah, that one, not gonna get on board with that. Although if you've got the money and you don't mind having fun and swapping things out like that, then go for it. I think it's a really cool idea. But yeah, the ones I saw from my resources in the magazines, I didn't quite like the look of the examples that they were given. Maybe, and I will actually look on Pinterest and try and find something that I can get on board with when it comes to stripes in the bathroom. And if there's anything, I'll leave them on the screen for you now to see if it can be done and change our minds. <laughs> but other than that, no, that one's definitely not for me. <laughs> the next one is dark wooden tones. So yeah, you've heard me speak about this, I think, in another video. But yeah, I do feel like this dark wood trend like branches off and stems from the old money aesthetic. Because if you see old money aesthetic examples, you'll see there's a lot of dark woods in there. So I think that that's part of it. I'm not going to get on board with the dark wood because it's so hard to get rid of. I mean, if you don't really like changing things out, like I would prefer to choose something that's timeless so that I didn't have to work on it and change it all out again in the future. Now I love wood tones in the house. I think you should choose a wood tone that goes well with your timeless aesthetic, whatever that may be, and stick to it. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of dark wood tones and I, I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful and it works in some houses. It's too dark for me. I think you can still achieve a quiet luxury look without investing in dark wood furniture. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing in my house, hopefully anyway. If you all remember from the beginning of this renovation that we're in, there was so much dark wood tones in this house. The mantle, the big period mantle piece, wooden mantle piece that we saved, it's actually in the snug. I've actually re redone that. I stripped it with paint stripper. It was mahogany. It was really dark wood and I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I stripped that down and we painted it and I've made it into like an oak looking style mid-tone wood. I would say, would you say it's light toned, mid to light toned wood? Yeah, a bit like the bed frame behind me. But yeah, it's much more of a nicer tone and it goes better with the colours in my house. And who remembers the staircase in this house? Oh, I'm still working on it now. <laughs> it's taking ages. It was mahogany again and all the panelling down in the stairway was mahogany panelled wood. I'll pop a picture on the screen. It was so dark and dismal looking. Yeah, it doesn't give me happy vibes, that kind of a tone of wood. It just doesn't, it doesn't make me feel good for some reason. <laughs> this next one's quite interesting and predictable. So the next one I want to chat about is silver hardware and accessories. So yes, you guys, you heard that right. Silver is coming back. Everyone's going mad for silver pieces, whether that be just hardware, you know, metals and vases and accessories. All the silver is coming back. 
I can't think of anything worse personally. It's another trend I will not be jumping on because I can see it for what it is, a trend. And I did jump on this trend back in the day. And you know, when it was all the gray aesthetic, gray and white, I didn't have a mind of my own. Everything was just gray and white, like everybody else's. And I was that girl, like I still got that freaking silver crush velvet sofa downstairs. In fact, I'm glad silver's coming back because someone might want to buy that sofa off me <laughs> so I can finally get rid of it because it's haunting me it's haunting me the reason we haven't bought another sofa in all these years since that is because we keep um doing renovation houses and we don't want to buy a nice new one and it get you know dusty and all of that stuff so we've kept that it's called the renovation sofa now because like it's not our sofa it's not in my mind it's not my sofa anymore <laughs> I don't have a sofa <laughs> And the reason why silver is on trend again is because trends are a business. Interior design is a business, so is fashion, so is everything. They make everything into a business. So if all of us have got all these brass accessories now, and that's where, what everyone's been buying, and then the market slows down, they're not buying it anymore because they've, they've done all their house in it then they're going to have to switch it out, aren't they? They're going to have to switch paths. Like, how can we get people buying again? Well, if we make silver now trending everyone's gonna run to silver and want to buy and deck out the, the house in silver all they care about is the money and guess what you will be doing it again when they change it again back to brass it is a revolving door and this is why i can really get on board with the quiet luxury and the timelessness designs vintage because they're timeless for a reason you never need to swap them out again and they're beautiful so yes, with that being said, I will not be jumping on the silver bandwagon. And before we move on to the next one, I just want to add this, like I said before, not every trend is for you. And when it comes to this silver trend, like silver does not even look good on me. Like I don't even wear anything silver. Like it doesn't go with my skin tone. <laughs> It actually clashes with my skin tone, like the, the warmer metals, the brass and the rose gold I usually wear in, in jewellery. And yeah, nobody thinks about that, do they? But you need to think about whether these colours suit your skin tone. Like it's all really important. You know, when everybody went for the silver hair trend, well, it depended on your skin tone, didn't it? It always suited the people with really pale um fair skin like my joelle like she's got really she suits all the pastel colors because she's really pale fair skinned whereas i'm olive skinned like more of a warmer tone therefore i suit the warmer colors my eyes are warmer and yeah silver just clashes with those tones and it really matters it does and yeah the next one is brown renaissance so when I read Brown Renaissance, it just made me think of like 70s vibes because everything was brown and um, I quite like the colours actually, but it was a bit psychedelic, eh, wasn't it? A little bit 60s infused as well in the 70s. I do love brown because it just works well with the tones that I love, like I was just saying, even my skin tone, even in fashion. And yeah, apparently we're going to see a surge of brown tones, chocolate brown tones or tone on tone browns, which I'm not mad at. I mean, I'm not going to go out and buy brown everything for my house or anything like that, like I said, but I already have brown in my decor, in my interior decor. I just think it looks beautiful with the tones I already have. So yeah, I'm not going to rush out and buy anything brown because there's a brown renaissance trend at the moment. Do you know what? I think they're bringing back like the chocolate brown and tone on tone bathrooms like they did in the 60s and 70s. Both these renovations had bathrooms like that. What did the old bathroom add in the other house? Oh, what colour was it? Was it peach? It was like this peach coloured bathroom. Or am I making that up? Why did I think it's peach? It could have been. Oh, it was awful colour anyway. And it was like from the 60s and 70s. And then this house, which has still got the chocolate brown bathtub and sink and toilet, chocolate brown. Um, you'll see all that again before we rip it out and start on the bathroom up here. Um, and I'll show it you in a bit more detail, but yeah, awful. And apparently they're coming back as part of this like brown 70s revival renaissance vibe but yeah that's not a bit of me definitely for bathrooms and kitchens i think you should keep it simple and timeless 
bring in the colour with accessories that are easy to replace rather than the actual cupboards and you know hardware and all the tiling and things like that another one according to house beautiful is sculptural art and the visuals i was seeing when i was reading this was like 3d art coming out of the walls and um you know not just an oil painting on the wall it was like you know really like abstract and popping out at you from the wall so like a sculpture but hanging off of the walls i'll pop some examples here on the screen for you now because like i said i'm not very good at explaining things now i think that's very modern it's very futuristic looking it's definitely not something that would suit my aesthetic or my interior design vibes sculptural art and it's just not something i can get on board with but there's some minimalistic people out there with the minimalistic futuristic designs and that would suit that kind of a vibe oh this one's really bloody good and i can't wait to chat about this one so the next trend is dumb homes yes that's right dumb homes so you know we've got the smart homes with all the futuristic like your house seems to know when you're waking up in the morning and puts the lights on for you and your coffee machine's downstairs doing its thing ready for when you get up and it's all a bit like robotic isn't it this futuristic smart homes i mean some features i suppose are really good you know where you've got some app on your phone and you can pop your heating on where when you're at work i think that's okay but some of these smart homes it's getting a little bit ridiculous now the technology in the homes like i was saying this almost last year and it's clearly a thing for other people as well with this being on the list and that's why i was so excited to talk about it so i was reading this and thinking yes oh my god i've been saying this so basically people are fed up of these how much technology is in the home i don't think it's very good for us because it it stops us from thinking it stops our brains from having to work and think and it's very lazy isn't it and like like it's quite scary the direction it's going if you let it and then there's not only that like we're humans and i think we were created to like create and make and do things and it fills up your day and um i get a lot of enjoyment out of the act of making my coffee in the morning like i literally romanticize it like we don't even have a microwave in our house not only is that processed food so freaking bad for you and we wonder why we've got all the cancers in the world and stuff like that obviously that's another topic um a whole discussion and i'm just touching on it but yeah not only that the radiation it gives off in your home there's no way i would cook a dinner in a microwave for anyone there's no way i would give my family that sort of food no chance i love it from scratch in fact in this house you'll see we've even gone for a range cooker why didn't i go for an induction hob i wanted the original range oldie worldy way of doing things we just prefer the old traditional things and the ways of doing things and it's a lifestyle and i love it clearly we're not the only ones so what they're saying in the magazines is people are choosing dumb homes what i would call my own a dumb home with less technology the better and i'm hoping gen z are really clocking onto this where technology is going it's quite scary isn't it and like her hello <laughs> this could be the end of humanity i don't want to scare anybody but like no it's not a bit of me but yeah it really gives me hope when i see things like this that people are preferring the older traditional ways of life um yeah it's just beautiful to me in my opinion oh the next one is custom secondary spaces so if you're lucky enough to have the space for this then people are looking to a secondary space so for example in my house we've done this haven't we we've got the kitchen and the mantle and the bits that are on show of the kitchen where the island is and then when we knock through in that back room is the working room it's a secondary space it's hidden away so that and that's the working part of the kitchen so it's still a part of the kitchen but it's out of the way and we're lucky enough to have the space to have done that and then furthermore we will be through the door and converting half of the garage into another secondary space which will be a secondary pantry room or a butler's pantry or however you want to call it 
another really popular one is the um, coffee bars that get shut away. It's still a secondary space. It's not exactly a coffee room, is it? But it's still a secondary space that you can close off and open up. I'm sure I saw a secondary bathroom space or else I'm absolutely dreaming it up right now. <laughs> if I have, I'll leave the inspiration on the screen for you now. But yeah, secondary spaces if you're lucky enough to have the space to do that. I'm sure it was a subscriber, how they've used the wallpaper as the backdrop in the pantry. And I just thought, wow. And it got me thinking, actually, I was sat there with my father-in-law and Ash on the day that my father-in-law was doing the wallpaper and I mentioned it to him that day. And I've also seen on inspiration on Pinterest that, um, you know, the Welsh dresses that I'm after downstairs for the coffee bar. So at the back of the Welsh dresser, you can put wallpaper on those as well. So custom furniture pieces that have like wallpaper in them. Does that make any sense? I'll leave visuals again on the screen because I'm not great at explaining things and I need visuals as well, but they look beautiful. So the next trend is maximalism. Am I saying that right? Maximalism. Living rooms. Now I'm seeing that in every sense of the word across the board, not just in living rooms. If you're on Instagram and you follow a lot of home stuff, the algorithm has probably saved you up something along these lines where people are saying, I think there's a trendy like audio going around and people are doing videos to it. And it's like, I want my house to be maximalism and I want it to be like a wizard's cave with all the collective things that I've collected along the years and it's like clutter but beautiful clutter. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they're not calling it clutter, they're calling it maximalism. So just all your favourite things and the more the, the more the better. Basically just moving away from minimalism. You know these rooms like Kim Kardashian with nothing in them and they're all sad beige aesthetic and the less the better. Um, they're moving more towards maximalism. So the opposite end of the scale. And um, again, I don't think you need to jump on them kind of trends. I think you should have as much stuff in your house as you want to clean. If you hate cleaning, you are better off having a minimalism house, aren't you? Because it's easier to clean. The more stuff, the more you have to clean and like work out and sort out. For me personally, and I know I'm not the only one, it's like the more stuff, the more um, the more busy my mind is. I, I can't rest. It's almost like, am I the only one that's like that? Like busy house, busy mind, or do they call it? Something like that. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong, we're not minimalists, me and Ash. I do like things, um, but not too many things. And then also on top of that, the other reason for that is we move around a lot with these renovations. The more stuff you have, people get attached to stuff unnecessary stuff you know we've been saying this for years because of the renovations and we notice it a lot by doing this but yeah people get attached to the stuff and they're like oh i can't move house i've got all this stuff well if you didn't have all that stuff you'd be light and free and easy and it wouldn't matter and you can just go because it is just stuff you guys don't get attached too much to your stuff and if that's not an incentive to go and have a real good clear out and sell some bits and make back some money, I don't know what is. I need to do that as well. <laughs> and there we go again, going to London to get to Preston. Before we move on to the next one, I just wanted to mention, yeah, maximalism living rooms in particular. So people are opting this year for more of a homely living room. You know, not like a soulless, minimalist living room. Like the, what What did they call it? That was, wabi-sabi, did they call it? Am I just making that up? It's like a Japanese, it were a Japanese trend back in 2020 when all the minimalism stuff were hanging around. And it was like, just bare looking, obscure furniture. Well, we're moving away from that. We want to see vintage. We want to see rugs, we want to see lots of cushions and tassels and trims and like maximalism living rooms. I'll pop some on the screen. Almost, almost like you've just walked into your granny's house and that feeling you get from her house. That's what people are jumping onto and I can get on board, just not with some of the colours. I will be creating my own colour palette. Maybe not too much of the maximalism, but not too much minimalism either. I'm going to be finding my sweet spot, so to speak. And I think that you guys should too. And then last but not least, the trend this year is niche. And I just think this one is the best one. We're saving the best to last. 
I didn't do this intentionally for this video actually. It just so happens it came up last. In fact though, it was the first trend I heard of in the new year, as soon as the new year hit when it comes to home interior. Like I said, there were a few reels floating around on Instagram in the new year where they were saying niche is the 2024 trend. And what that means is go with what you like and follow that journey wherever it takes you. It doesn't matter that nobody else is doing it. Go with what you like. You are niche, your own design and follow your own mind. And I can't get on board more with that one than any others in this video. Like that makes me really, really bloody happy. I think you should all have your own minds and work out whether something works for you or not. I think we all should be niche and it just makes me really happy to live amongst other human beings, unique human beings that have their own mind and it's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? So with that being said, I just wanted to thank everybody for stopping by and watching this video and discussing these trends with me. Let me know in the comments what you think about these trends or just your thoughts in general. Always, always leave me a comment because I love chatting with you guys down there. I hope you haven't missed me too much and I will see you in the next vlog. So much to catch you up on you guys, so much to catch you up on and I might even have a luxury unboxing from Italy that has been sat there actually for quite some time because I've not been well. I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead and I will hopefully see you all in my next video. Bye guys!